In this recording, we shall look at addition and subtraction of thirds. And if we want to leave thirds in exact third form, as opposed to rounding them off correct to a specified number of decimal places, then we can only directly add and subtract thirds if they can be written so they have the same number under a consistent root sign. And in these examples, we will focus on thirds involving a square root. Let's suppose, for example, that we wanted to simplify 3 root 5 plus 2 root 3 minus 5 root 5 plus 3 root 2 plus 4 root 3. Let's start by grouping these so that all of the ones with the same root sign appear one term after another. Now we have 3 root 5. Is there anything else in there with the square root of 5 in it? Yes, we also have minus 5 root 5. So make sure that the sign is consistent with the sign in front of that particular third. Nothing else here involves the square root of 5. What other types of thirds do we have? Well, we've got 2 times the square root of 3 here, so plus 2 root 3. Anything else involving the square root of 3? Yes, we also have a plus 4 root 3. Anything else we haven't included with a different number under the square root sign? Yes, we also have a plus 3 root 2. So these two, in terms of root 5, will be able to simplify to one term, and these two, involving the square root of 3, will simplify to one term. So let's look at this first pair. 3 root 5 minus 5 root 5. So that's 3 lots of the square root of 5. Subtract 5 lots of the square root of 5. Now 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So this is going to give us negative 2, lots of the square root of 5. Similarly, now if we look at our group of terms involving square root of 3, we have 2 root 3 plus 4 root 3. So 2 lots of the square root of 3 plus another 4 lots of it will give us plus 6 root 3. And that 3 root 2 term on the end does not simplify any further. So this will be our final answer. Now one thing to notice, which I'll come back to in a minute, is notice here that the square roots here, square root of 5, square root of 3, square root of 2, those are all actually square roots of prime numbers. And furthermore, none of those, because they're prime numbers, they in fact do not have any factors other than 1 and the number itself. But also, that means none of these particular numbers, square root of 5, 3, or 2, none of them could have been written as the product of two factors, including a perfect square greater than 1. And I mention that because that will become relevant in the second example we're about to do. So keeping that in mind, let's look at a second example. Simplify square root of 3 plus square root of 12 minus 2 times square root of 18, plus 5 times square root of 2, plus 2 times the square root of 6. Now looking at this, there are no two terms here that have the same number under the square root sign. So you might initially think that means we cannot simplify this. However, we said that thirds can be added or subtracted if they can be written so that they have the same number under a square root sign. Now, can any of these thirds be written in a different way? This will be the case if some of these thirds have a perfect square greater than 1 as a factor. So square root of 3 is a prime, so we can't do anything with that. But what about square root of 12? 12 is equal to 3 times 4 where 4 is a perfect square. So let's just rewrite it as square root of 4 times 3, and we'll return to that in a minute. The next one, minus 2 root 18, so leave that 2 out the front. But square root of 18, is 18 divisible by any perfect squares greater than 1? 
Yes, it's divisible by 9. So let's rewrite that as square root of 9 times 2. Can't do anything else with square root of 2, so that stays the same. What about 6? Now 6 is not a prime number. 6, for instance, could be written as 2 times 3, but that will not help us here because 2 and 3 are not perfect squares. So therefore we would leave that as square root of 6. Now, continuing on to the next stage, square root of 4 times 3, let's break that up as square root of 4 times square root of 3. We can leave off that multiplication sign to make that look a bit simpler when working with thirds like this. The next one, minus 2 square root of 9, square root of 2, breaking that up in the same way, and then our last two terms remain unchanged here. And now we can see that square root of 4 is 2, so what started as square root of 12 is in fact 2 root 3. This bit here, 2 times the square root of 9, now the square root of 9 is just 3, so that becomes 2 times 3, so that's just 6 root 2 and the other terms remain the same. Now this is the simplest form of each of these thirds. So now let's have a look to see if there's any terms we can group together and hence reduce to a single term. And yes there are. We have square root of 3 plus 2 lots of the square root of 3. What does that give us? one lot of the square root of 3 plus another two lots of it, that will give us 3 root 3. These terms here in terms of square root of 2 can also be simplified. Now remember we must take heed of that minus sign. We basically have negative 6 lots of the square root of 2 plus 5 lots of it. Now negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, so that will be negative 1 times the square root of 2, or just negative root 2. And finally we don't have anything else in terms of the square root of 6 so that will just stay 2 root 6. So this would be our answer in the simplest form.